Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Watch and Wearer. I'm your host, Robert Chest. I'm going to start this episode off today with a quick, who are you wearing? So as, as you may or may not know, I do a who are you wearing uh, sort of as uh, an opportunity to do the traditional wristwatch check, but also talk about the clothing that I might be wearing or something that I might be featuring. So we'll start with that today. Right now I am wearing, let's see here. This is the Citizen Pro Master Diver. Oh, I'm joined by my kitty. Hey Friday, hey Friday. Let me get you to jump down, okay? Thank you. <laughs> this is my Citizen Pro Master Diver. It's uh, something that just came out at the end, I think, of 2017, kind of around Christmas time. So that, um, you know, it was uh, something that definitely was in all the stores for Christmas. I really fell in love with it right away. Um, I had my eye set on my really my first watch purchase for my collection um, and then just before I bought that watch this watch came in sorry my cat is on the table Friday jump down please uh, I bought um, so I was just about to buy my first watch the one I had my eye on the one that I was all I was, I was set, I was in love with it, and I still am. And this one came in and made my life very complicated for a little while. But um, I was able to buy the watch that I had my eye on and still pick this one up later. Um, I've got a bunch of them in my store right now. Actually, I, I had about three of them, and I think I'm down to one. Uh, when they come in, they do sell. So, a uh, beautiful dive watch. It's uh, got a... 60 click bezel unidirectional it is iso certified it really is a beauty for the money uh available from citizen right now um so that's my wristwatch check done i am also wearing a shirt by hue and cry uh that's h-u-g-h the little ampersand symbol C-R-Y-E. They are an online men's shirt, tie, I think they even have pocket squares now, uh, retailer that's been around for a couple of years. I picked this, this shirt up and one like this in kind of more of an orange color uh, that I really, really like. It's got a nice high tight button down collar, a couple of buttons uh, at, the, uh, at the top here. I mainly wear it uh, it's kind of like a sport shirt, just something without a tie, but I have worn it under a blazer or a, like a blue sport coat. Um, really beautiful shirt. Hue and Cry came about because uh, guy shirts tend to, you know, <clears throat> you pick a neck size, you pick a sleeve length, and then the rest of the shirt is one size fits all. And Hue and Cry was an attempt to try to... Um, get a shirt to fit a little bit more tailored. So they, I think they came out with nine sizes for each neck size, essentially. Um, so you, you pick one of three uh, shirt shapes. I think there was like a, a really skinny version and then like a, a sort of a slim fit version, which is what I wear, and then more of a athletic so you know big on top skinny waist kind of thing uh, and then you picked a length short medium tall and that kind of gave you like a, a nine size grid for any given neck size and so I think that that's how they how they set up their shirts I, I really have have loved this shirt um, I thought about buying more things from them but I, I have a lot of dress shirts anyway so uh, I haven't I haven't delved in as much as I could, but um, uh, I think Hue and Cry is still going strong, but uh, I'll have to check. I'll, if, if so, I'll leave a link in the comments and and uh, let you all know where, they, where they're where located. But it's Hue and Cry, uh, beautiful, beautiful shirt maker, dress shirts, ties, pocket squares, lots of things you can get from them. So that's Who Are You Wearing? Uh, now let's roll the intro. 
Welcome back. Uh, once again, this is Watch and Wear. I'm happy you're here with me today. This is my. This is actually my second uh, all-time video for this podcast. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm just getting started, but uh, hopefully it's something that you're going to find interesting. There's going to be interesting content coming up, so make sure you come back to join me for that. Uh, what I want to do today is to talk about uh, essentially something that I'm going to make maybe into it like a segment when I talk about a watch, but I'm calling it the breakdown. Now, what is the breakdown? The breakdown is essentially the idea that certain watches will pair well with certain portions of your wardrobe based on how dressy or casual they are. Um, so I've, I've essentially broken down, hence the name, uh, men's fashion into 10 categories. Uh, by how dressy it is. And that's going to give me an opportunity to talk about watches in terms of the breakdown so that you'll know, all right, this watch works well with dressy items in these certain categories or casual items in these other categories. And hopefully it's going to kind of give you some guidance on how to wear sp specific watches or specific types of watches. Now, not every watch within a, a broad category is going to fit into the breakdown exactly the same way. So I might sometimes give like broad categories, like a diver, right, might fit into the breakdown in a certain way, theoretically. But you have divers that are more dressy, divers that are more of like a tool watch, a little bit more that work more with a casual wear. Uh, so I'm going to be specific on different watches and tell you where I think, and once again, this is my opinion, where I think they fit in on the breakdown. So let's start with the, uh, the breakdown. I'm going to give it to you uh, 10 steps from dressy to casual. Number 10, what I'm, what I'm calling the, uh, the sort of the top of the pyramid here, the most dressy style that, that basically would fit into a men's wardrobe. And I'm going to group two things here that, that you could treat separately, uh, but I'm going to treat them as one thing. Um, you know, some of you will say, well, this is only one thing, but, uh, really two, but tuxedos and white tie and tails, those are really two things in my mind, two different things, uh, that might, might justify having their own category, but with only 10 categories, I, I don't really have the space to spare. Um, one thing to note, white tie and tails, generally speaking, is considered the most formal thing that a man can wear. Um, it consists of a white bow tie, white shirt, white vest, um, uh, or sort of like a waistcoat. Um, and those tend to be uh, either like a very fine, um, like poplin cloth, or sometimes they're textured with what's called a pique texture. Uh, which just means it kind of has uh, a little bit of like a, uh, not not knit, but uh, kind of something, it's a woven that almost looks like a knit. It has a texture to it. Um, a little bit difficult to describe. At some point, I'll give you uh, you guys an idea of what I'm talking about because I have one of these things um, and can, can show it off at some point later in the future. <laughs> uh, so come back to see me in white tie and tails. Um, but generally, it's worn with a tailcoat, which is a tuxedo that in the front ends um, just above the waist and in the back extends into two tails. Now, you'll often see this uh, used by maybe conductors uh, of an orchestra or sometimes a piano soloist will come out uh, in white tie and tails um, or very, very formal 
parties. I, I bought mine to go to a, a masked ball uh, that I had a lot of fun at up in uh, New York State. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so every time I wear it, I get the kind of uh, butler, uh, are you a groom at a wedding? Um, or a lot of people thinking about the guy who's the piano soloist will sort of do the little gesture where they uh, sort of flip the tails back as they sit down. Uh, but people have a lot of fun when, <laughs> when I wear that, uh, which I do on special occasions for, uh, for things like uh, fine jewelry trunk shows and things. I, I like to dress up and, and really make a, a show of it. But anyway, so white tie, now, generally speaking, white tie and tails, you traditionally would not wear a watch uh, with that outfit. But I think uh, uh, like the nicest, most, uh, most dressy dress watches might possibly work for that. For a tuxedo, uh, which I'm putting in the same category, uh, normally you would be looking at a watch that sticks to um, gold, silver, white, and black. A nice dress watch, something that would slide under the cuff very easily, meaning that it's, uh, it's thin, it's not, it's not that tall, so it slips underneath the cuff of your French cuff very easily and is sort of tucked away until you need it. Um, that's generally what's considered appropriate. Obviously, uh, James Bond uh, in his various incarnations, has worn more tool-oriented watches, like a diver with a, a, ta with a tuxedo. Uh, and I think that there's room for that, but not with every diver watch. So you want to be careful there. Um, so that's number 10. That's the tuxedo white tie tails. I'll, I promise I'll move a little bit faster here. Uh, number nine, the next most dressy, uh, would be tailored or couture suiting. So think something really, really high-end in, in suiting or tailored either something that's made from scratch uh, just for you um, or something that comes slightly unfinished. I was uh, in a men's, men's suit store uh, where they were selling um, suits really, really nice suits, uh, Hickey Freeman, as a matter of fact. And the Hickey Freeman suit is going to come only partially finished. So especially like at the cuff, where a lot of times people have to have the length altered. Um, it was not completely finished. Other places, you know, it was, it was left unfinished because it's going to be tailored specifically to you. Um, couture suiting might be something more like, uh, like a Tom Ford or you know, something that's really got uh, a lot of sort of a hot couture uh, look to it. Um, so I'm going to do a category for those uh, separate from number eight, which is formal suiting. Uh, basically your traditional suit and tie like you might buy off of the rack at a department store or at a men's store. Um, so I'm calling that formal suiting. Um, but generally formal suiting is going to be dressier than just wearing uh, you know, a suit and tie, like you might to work. Uh, number seven is business attire, which is going to be suit and tie. Now, if my list seems a little skewed towards the dressy side for you, it might be because you tend to live more on the casual side, and that's fine. Um, we're going to get to the casual side, but bear with me, and, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Uh, but business attire is number seven, uh, so suit and tie, traditional business attire, Number six is going to be anything that has to do with a sport coat. Now, sport coats can be worn with a tie or without. Um, and I want to uh, distinguish between a sport coat and a blazer for you real quick. A blazer is generally a navy sport coat that has gold buttons. Sometimes, sometimes the color is, a, is black on a blazer. Mostly they're navy. Sometimes the buttons, instead of being gold, would be silver. But generally speaking, your traditional blazer is uh, navy blue with gold buttons. It's a slightly more casual look than a sport coat. Um, but sport coats have a lot of variety. I, I have a lot of sport coats that I'm going to feature on the channel. So I'll be, uh, I'll be wearing sport coats that I'll be talking about 
um, a lot a, a great way to sort of dress up something that might otherwise be a little bit casual um, and it, have a lot of fun with it because there's lots of patterns and things available uh, so you can really have a lot of fun with sport coats uh, number five, I'm calling business casual, and I'm going to stick blazers into this category, really, as kind of a step down from a sport coat. But business casual, you know, might be like a sport shirt with a tie or a sport shirt with a blazer, um, you know, nice khaki pants, something like that. Uh, number four is going to be chinos and sport shirts. So once again, shirts that would have a collar, whether it be a knit or a woven like I'm wearing right now. Uh, but with chinos or, you know, sort of slacks. Um, number, number three is going to be your jeans and sports shirts. So we're still collar. We still are wearing a collar at this point. But we might be pairing that with jeans as a like slightly more casual look. Usually not considered work appropriate, uh, depending on the type of job that you have. Obviously, a lot of people wear jeans and sports shirts to work. Um, if they have a little bit more physical job, uh, but generally not office appropriate most of the time. Number two is going to be jeans and t-shirts, and I'm going to throw in athleisure in this, uh, in this category as well. Um, so basically anything that's in there, you know, something that you would wear out, but not something that's particularly dressy at all. Very casual category. And then I, I have left number one as a category for almost you're almost too casual to be going out uh, so be careful with this category um, and, and we'll have fun with that category as well as we go forward I think but that's the breakdown so tuxedo tailored or couture suiting at number nine eight formal suiting seven business attire six sport coat five business casual and blazers number four chinos and sport shirts number three jeans and sport shirts and number two jeans and t-shirts or athleisure and number one that that very very casual category uh, where you almost uh, are too casual say hi Friday say hi almost too casual to be going out of the house uh, with that so that's the breakdown just to give you an idea of how I'm going to use that let's talk about this diver watch right here my citizen Pro Master Diver that I was telling you about earlier. Um, this, for a diver, is a fairly casual watch, um, but something that you could wear in like a business setting. Oh, hi, Friday. You could wear in a business setting. So I'm going to say that this one would definitely be appropriate all the way down into the jeans and t-shirts area, where really, because it's got this sort of... Um, this sort of gear um, gear edge to the bezel. Uh, it's just a little bit more casual. I would totally uh, feel comfortable wearing this with jeans and t-shirts. Um, but it really goes far on up the scale. Uh, I would say that this would be appropriate all the way up to business attire, which is number six. Um, I'm, no, sorry, number seven, business attire. So probably too casual for formal suiting for your most formal suitings it's got the orange um the orange second hand there the blue color like i said the sort of gear edge bezel it's just a little bit too uh, too casual for those those nicer categories but a very versatile watch and and divers tend to be versatile so i'm going to give this uh, a two to seven on the breakdown uh, so that's how the breakdown will work to give you an idea uh, this divers watch will be a two to a seven and we'll talk about each watch that I feature on the channel and probably most of my wrist watches while I'm at it uh, to give you an idea of how I think that they fit best into your wardrobe um, like I said divers are very versatile they're gonna they're gonna span a, a great deal of the spectrum and this one is is um, definitely an example of that uh, from all the way from number two jeans and t-shirts up to uh, you know dressing for work uh, super super versatile all right I do have a couple of other things that uh, that I want to talk about um, so we've done our we've done our who are you wearing um, segment already I'm gonna tend to put that at the front 
uh, before the intro. But uh, I do have a couple other segments that I promised you guys. So the first segment that we're going to do after uh, talking about the breakdown is Robert's Rules of Order. Once again, Robert's Rules of Order, in case you don't know, is a parliamentary procedure handbook. Uh, one of uh, a few different resources that you have for setting up parliamentary procedures. If you don't know what that is, look it up on Wikipedia. That's fine. I'm co-opting that name because my name is Robert. Uh, and so these are sort of rules that I have for watch wearing. Um, and the first rule that I want to give you guys, and it is an important one, uh, is this. Buy a watch because you love it and not for any other reason. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you might buy a watch. You might walk into a store and see something that you think, wow, that's a great deal. Uh, I've done this before. <laughs> that's a great deal. Oh, I should, I should buy that. I should snatch that up. But when I really stopped to think about it, I wasn't in love with that watch. I was in love with the idea of getting a deal. But here's what's going to happen when you do that, guys. It is going to sit there, and you're not going to wear it, and eventually you're going to end up getting rid of it, and you will have probably sold it for less than you bought it for, almost always, uh, even, no matter how great a deal you got on the watch. If you don't love it, uh, it's, it's something that's not going to bring you the kind of pleasure uh, that owning a watch really should. So buy a watch because you love it and not for any other reason. Um, so there you go. That's Robert's Rules of Order number one, uh, the prime directive, if you will. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, more Robert's Rules of Order in upcoming episodes. Stay tuned for that. Um, the, the last thing that I'll do is I will talk about my watch crush of the moment. Now, if you, uh, if you saw my last video, I think I talked about the new reinterpreted Seiko diver that's sort of a reimagining of the very first Seiko diver that they released. Um, and still crushing on that hard, but I'll go ahead and inc include another watch crush and kind of do a new one uh, each time, regardless of whether I'm over the last crush. So don't think that I'm, don't think that I'm that inconstant, that I'm, um, you know, that I'm flitting from one watch to another. I, I, I'm capable of loving and crushing on lots of watches at one time, as, as you'll come to find out. Uh, but just to share a new one with you, one that I really, really am thinking about adding to my collection, I'll put a, I'll put a picture up, um, probably over here. I'll put a picture up in a second, uh, but this is going to be the Citizen Signature Collection Grand Classic Automatic the uh, reference number is NB0040-07A. Beautiful automatic watch from Citizen as part of their signature collection. Um, the Grand Classic look is amazing. They've got some that I'm not entirely sold on, uh, but this one with the white dial, the black real crocodile leather strap, that may be Robert's Rules of Order number two. Don't, do not, do not do uh, an embossed crocodile leather, uh, you know, a genuine leather embossed crocodile. Don't do it. If it's not real crocodile, you do not need the crocodile look on the bag. <laughs> Don't, it's awful. I, 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 it's hard for me to overstate how much I, I really dislike that. Um, if you're going to do a croc look, make it real crocodile, okay? <laughs> that's, uh, that's Robert's Rules of Order number two. You got two, two for the price of one. Um, this is a real crocodile leather strap, uh, black strap, dressy watch. I'm really in love with the, the face of this watch. The, the date window is amazing. Uh, I don't know. I, this is one that I really would love to own. It's... Um, it's pricey for what I can afford in my collection right now, but something that I really, 
I really would love to have that one uh, as a nice dress watch for, for myself. Anyway, so that's my watch crush of the moment, the Citizen Signature Collection Grand Classic Automatic. Uh, there are lots of styles that, that you might like, uh, some that have blue with some rose gold accents or white with a, a silver bracelet and kind of a blued hands. I'm not sure if they're truly blued hands or if they're kind of painted or blue, but that's another matter. Uh, anyway, but uh, this watch is available uh, in lots of different um, colors, options, so uh, maybe something that you'd, uh, you'd like as well for a part of your collection. Uh, all right, so that's it. I'll leave it there for today. Uh, once again, my name is Robert Chest. I'm your host, and this has been Watch and Wear. If you like this uh, video, if you enjoy what you're seeing and look forward to more, uh, feel free to like uh, the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that would really help me out a lot, and we'll see you next time.